Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got five quick tips to naturally help you improve your metabolism and your thyroid function. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get much better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into this one. All right, like I said, today's topic is how to naturally boost your metabolism and thyroid function. Now, how can we first of all lump some those two together? Well, because first of all, our one common denominator of all the sum of our metabolic functions is the function of our thyroid and specifically the ability of our energy production in cells is dependent upon the thyroid hormone T3. So our thyroid and our metabolism are one in the same essentially due to that relationship that they have with one another. Now, how do you know if you have a sluggish thyroid or metabolism? Well, first of all, do you have a low heart rate, a heart rate in the 50s, 40s, down in that range? Do you run cold? Is your body temperature below 98.6 degrees, a burning 96 degrees? That makes a big difference. Do you have digestive issues? anything that could be like bloating, gas, di uh, diarrhea, or constipation, any of those digestive issues could be problematic and could point to this as well. Do you have low libido or a low sex drive? Are you infertile or do you have PMS symptoms if you're a woman? All of those can be indicators of low metabolic function and low thyroid. Do you heal slowly? Do you have a hard time recovering from injuries? Or does it take you a long time to recover in between workouts because of the muscle tissue and damage that's been done there? Is that a problem for you? Do you bruise easily and does it take a long time to go away? That is a metabolic problem. Do you have poor hair, skin, and nails? Or do you suffer with bone, teeth, issues, things along those lines. Is your heart suffering in any way, shape, or form? Do you have cardiovascular issues in any way, shape, or form? These are all things that can be utilized and added up, put together to tell you how your metabolism is doing, how your thyroid is doing. So using that list, you can go through and think of, okay, do I have any of these issues? How many of them do I actually struggle with? and that might give you a better indication or picture of how your metabolism is doing overall. If your immunity is something that suffers as well, I should mention, if you get sick often and regularly, that is problematic, okay? So those are all things to be looking at. Ready? Let's go ahead and talk about the five things that you can do now though to help improve and boost your metabolism naturally. Number one, Stop trying to live in a caloric deficit. It's one thing to periodically try and lose weight and put yourself in a caloric deficit. It's a whole nother thing to constantly eat fewer calories than my four-year-old daughter requires. And that is 1,600 calories to give you a number. And I know there's a lot of adults out there who are putting themselves below that mark just in the name of weight loss, which by the way, if your metabolism is working correctly, we should not have to cut our calories to the point of no return or avoid food altogether just because we're trying to lose weight. That's not how it should work. That should be a clear indication that your metabolism is not functioning in the way that it needs to be if you have to continuously cut calories so low 
that you've reached a point that there is barely any food coming in or you are simply avoiding meals altogether. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to understand here is that the caloric amount we take in will depend how our body gets our energy. So when we are in a caloric deficit, we are often using cortisol and adrenaline to produce the glucose that is needed in our body to function effectively. So our body is creating energy by spiking our stress hormones. And any time that our stress hormones are elevated, this is directly inhibiting our thyroid function. So if we have high cortisol levels at any point in time due to stress, whether that be cutting calories, extreme intense exercise, or any form of stress in your daily life and routine, those all are drawing from your energy stores by using adrenaline and cortisol, which is directly inhibiting your thyroid function. So realistically, one of the best things you can do, just like building a fire that burns extremely hot, is build your caloric intake back up gradually. Especially if you've been in a deficit, you're going to have to gradually build your fire back up. Our metabolism is just like a fire. A good fire does not burn hot with less wood. It actually gradually gets built up with smaller, then a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, then we're adding logs, then we're adding whole trees, that kind of thing. So you need to also do that with your metabolism. That is a sign of a metabolism that is efficiently running, is one that requires more food. That is what we want people. So eating your caloric intake that should maintain your weight or slightly elevating that to the point that you're able to eat more calories gradually over time without gaining weight. And you can do this by gradually adding about 250 calories depending on your body, it might take a little bit less or more so, and you should not see significant increases in your weight by adding that little bit of calor caloric intake each day over time. And you can continue to add 250 at a time until you build to a normal range of caloric intake once again, which is probably somewhere in the 2000s to 3000s for most people. If you are down in the thousands right now, this is specifically speaking to you, okay? Understand that. If you're below 2,000, we are getting into the range of a four-year-old child's needs, and that is not good. So get back to a normal caloric range. If you don't know where to start with that, track where your calories are for a week and see what you're currently eating on average over those seven days and that'll give you a baseline to work off of and then you can gradually start that increase from there number two stop avoiding carbohydrates just avoid the wrong kind of carbohydrates okay so here's something very important to understand glucose is the main fuel source for our body that's why we have things like gluconeogenesis, where our body will take protein and fat to actually create glucose so that it can be used in a form that our body prefers, glucose. So why not go directly to the simple carbohydrate sources that are natural and best that you can get that easily in your body and not cause your body to have to do more work, AKA add more stress on your systems to create that glucose that it's gonna get anyhow, one way or another. So stop avoiding carbohydrates, add in lots of fruits, okay? Eating fruit freely and openly. And if you're worried 
about the sugar content. There is no reason to be worried about natural occurring sugar in these products, by the way, and what I'm suggesting. So I'm not telling you to necessarily go out and eat bags of cane sugar, although if it was a minimally processed variety, you would still be okay because it's not the sugar that's the problem. We're focusing on the wrong thing there. There's actually a bigger picture and it's usually what sugar is packaged with that is the problem at hand, which we'll get into in a second here. But naturally occurring fruit sugars are okay. Eating as much fruit as you want. The other thing to understand about fruit is that it is also packed with a lot of potassium in most cases. And potassium acts in place of insulin as a driver to get that glucose into the cell naturally. So things with fructose actually spike your blood sugar a lot less than things that are pure glucose alone, okay? Things like breads, where they're long chain polysaccharides, the long chain breads, more complex starchy type things, those will get a blood sugar spike. But the things that are fructose combined with glucose, then those do not cause that same response in our body because they're also packaged with potassium, a lot of them. Very important to understand how that works and that, again, glucose itself is more of what spikes blood sugar and that is where people are concerned with eating too much carbohydrate. So eating fruits, eating root vegetables, eating your fruit vegetables, well cooked, I will add with that. So when we eat our vegetables, we wanna make sure that we are cooking them down to minimize the anti-nutrient content in them. And things like milk, getting a good dairy source, so it could be milk or cheese, I should say. Um, you can try goat's milk, you can try a raw milk if you can find it, or a unpasteurized, unhomogenized if you can find it. If not, you can do pasteurized, unhomogenized, that's your next best option. The least tampered with in dairy is the best form. And then you can also try honey, if I didn't mention that one yet, um, in there as well as your natural sweetener. Stop avoiding sugars, stop avoiding carbohydrates. Part of this is also, again, coming back to that idea of blood sugar spikes, is that it doesn't matter if you eat high amounts of protein and no carbohydrates and you eat an imbalanced meal in that way where it's protein only, that's going to spike your blood sugar and then drop it and also cause a similar cortisol response in our body. So again, just because we're avoiding sugars or carbohydrates does not necessarily mean that we are still balancing our blood sugar in the way that we need to be. That's very important to understand and that spike and drop resulting in a cortisol response in our body comes back to again, anytime cortisol is pro present and there's that stress to our body, it is going to suppress and affect our thyroid and our metabolism. So help your body out, starting in those car carbohydrates, gradually adding them back in if you've been avoiding them, especially gradually adding them back in because you will see a change because your body has to, again, adapt to learning how to metabolize that once again after it hasn't been doing it for so long. Anytime you make a switch, anticipate that there's gonna be an adaptation period, but add them back in and you will be doing your metabolism a huge favor. All right, number three. Here's one that you actually can start to minimize in your diet. And notice I use the word minimize because there's no such thing as completely eliminating it. But start to minimize your polyunsaturated fat intake. These are going to be nuts, seeds, legumes, such as soy products, beans, the grains. Those can all go ahead and get put to the side. Polyunsaturated fats are highly reactive to light and heat. And your 
putting them in a 98.6 degree furnace with a solar panel basically built into it. So you are exposing them to light, exposing them to heat as soon as they enter your body. And what happens is those polyunsaturated fats are more likely to oxidize in our body and create free radicals. This is sludge to our metabolism, directly slowing down our metabolic processes. If you take a fish oil supplement or omega-3 supplement, you are directly doing your metabolism harm and damage right now. What you can do is cut that and swap it for a vitamin E because what happens is all our vitamin E is getting drained and a large percentage of us are deficient in vitamin E because of all the polyunsaturated fat content in the foods that we've been eating over the past 30 years since saturated fat had been demonized and swapped out for all these other makeshifts and dairy products that are supposedly dairy products that come from nuts and things like that. Um, there's a lot of that being consumed right now in large quantities that we would not normally be consuming if we did not have the production that we do. And that is problematic to our bodies. So that's something very important to understand is that free radical creation from the oxidation of polyunsaturated fats is killing your metabolism and slowing it down directly. It's also causing other issues that are adding up such as health heart concerns and even things like your skin burning a lot easier because you're basically cooking yourself in those easily oxidated oils. So do yourself a favor, start to minimize those in your diet and you will see a big change in your metabolic processes overall as your body starts to get used to once again consuming more of those carbohydrates more of those calories that it should be getting and regular saturated fats which are more protective to our body overall number four stop flushing your vitamins and minerals with gallons of water each day Drinking water only is not a solution to rehydrate your body because hydration status is not simply the water content in our body. That's very important to understand. It is highly dependent upon the balance of the electrolytes within our cells as well. So that includes magnesium, copper, calcium, it includes potassium, it includes sodium, and what you end up doing by drinking all that water is flushing those minerals with it as you pee it out 10 plus times throughout your day. You should be urinating anywhere from four to five times a day. It should not be more than that. So if you are doing more than that, you're likely overhydrating yourself, drinking too much water, forcing yourself to do that. Better ways to hydrate include more mineral dense beverages. That could be like coffee, um, orange juice, or a fresh organic juice of some sort. That could be dairy, again, a good milk source. That could be tea. It could be, um, did I mention coffee already? Yeah, so those are my big ones. I actually did a video on this that I'll put right here so you can check it out and that will give you more in-depth detail but what you need to know is stop flushing yourself out with too much water and last but not least number five stop mouth breathing it seems so simple but it is one of the biggest ways that we are directly inhibiting our metabolism our metabolism is about oxygen usage, right? So if that's the case, when we mouth breathe, we are over oxygenating and not having the ability to transfer that oxygen to the cells. We actually need 
carbon dioxide to help make that transfer at a cellular level, releasing the oxygen from the red blood cells and getting it into the cells where it is needed for the metabolic processes that are occurring. Nasal breathing is how we do that. We regulate our oxygen levels much better, our carbon dioxide levels much better, and we are able to better balance that out and transfer better. Now this can also transfer into your exercise. So even when you exercise, and this might take you a step back at first, learning to nasal breathe while you're exercise in and using that as a regulator can be a very powerful skill to learn and it will help you in the long run because a lot of us are doing the wrong type of breathing mouth breathing throughout the day because we have to talk a bunch or whatever the fact we may not even be aware of it but nasal breathing alone throughout the day, mouth taping at night can be a very beneficial practice and nasal breathing during exercise and using that as your intensity regulator. Those things can be very powerful in helping you metabolize better and utilize oxygen better simply because you will transfer oxygen better from red blood cells to the cells themselves in that one simple switch. All right, and there you have it. Five tips to help you naturally boost your metabolism and thyroid function without having to overthink it. It's as simple as these five things right here, and that alone could help you take leaps and bounds if you're having some of those symptoms that I mentioned at the very beginning to really help restore your body's health overall by restoring your metabolism and your thyroid function and not relying so heavily on those adrenal hormones, those stress hormones. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend who struggles with some of the symptoms that I mentioned earlier. Um, send some love their way, you know they need it. If you are someone who's looking to actually work on these things and improve your metabolism, improve your health, you can improve the way that you move at the same time, then what I want you to do is drop down below in the coaching application in the description there, fill out that coaching application, and I will get with you so we can talk about what it would look like to move forward in the right direction here. Again, down in the, coach, in the description here, coaching application is below. Fill that out and I will get in touch with you so that we can get you moving in the right direction. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll see you next week.